And good morning. We are live and with me here today is John Kennard. Hi, John. Hi, Rachel. How are you? I am very good. I'm very well, thank you. So welcome everybody to Better Smarter Learning. And um, with me is John Kennard from The Training Journal. And uh, before I want to introduce John, I just want to say a quick word to our sponsors, Better Smarter Learning, who is sponsored by Passion Toolset, which is a tool set for coaches, leaders, and learning students, and it permanently shifts their mental blocks by dealing with procrastination and overwhelm on a daily basis and helping them with any team goals, with any growing their coaching business or just generally life and the complicated nature of leadership, which we're probably going to get into today as well, John. So um, thank you to our sponsor and um, John, who um, has been editor of the Training Journal for two and a half years now, John? Yeah. About, yeah. About, yeah. And for 10 years, you've been excuse me, um, in the content and creation industry, and you've worked in different media companies, Training Zone, Learning Now TV, and uh, is that about right? Anything I've missed off? No, that's about right. I um, Yes, I've been in digital publishing for about 15 years and learning L&D digital publishing for, for about 10. Uh, I came into it through uh, being a freelance writer, being a journalist, rather than knowing anything about L&D. So rather than... So my predecessor at my old job uh, was a was someone in L&D first and she then learned about publishing, whereas I knew about publishing and then learned about L&D as I, I kind of got into the job. So yeah. it seemed scary at first just to take in all the different elements of how the industry fits together, what kind of people you're dealing with, all the the famous names and the influencing, the influences, if you could call it, that we, not yeah. that we really used that word back then. Um, but how how the events fit together and how uh, uh, how the how the industry runs itself really. But I after probably a couple of months, I uh, I was I was pretty much up to speed with how how L and D works in the UK. I think. Yeah. Ish. Okay, maybe you can fill me in on that as well. <laughs> like you say, the nuances of each industry. Like once you get to know the the main characters and the way mm. it works, um, generally, yeah, e each industry. Is kind of the same. Once you understand that, it's it's uh, kind of straightforward from there. Um, so today we wanted to mainly focus a bit on Training Journal and just understanding a bit more, you know, about the background of Training Journal. So obviously, like you say, a lot of people in learning and development have heard of Training Journal, but it's nice to kind of understand where you've come from and where you're going to and what you provide to the industry. Sure. So do do you, do you want to kind of kick us off, John, with you know, past, past, present, and future, as, as we kind of coined it when, when we were looking at this. Um, do you want to start us off with, with that, with the training journal? Sure. So TJ started as a training officer, as a magazine, in the mid-60s. Uh, can you believe it? So 54 oh. years ago. Wow. Yeah. Um, and that's when I said to you when we were talking previously of wow you were there from the start John you looked so good <laughs> and you didn't oh, yeah. at me for saying that <laughs> moisturizing daily that's the <laughs> um yeah so so for the for the next couple of decades at least it was it was you know mainly print and then uh, obviously uh, I guess the internet comes into play well aside from being invented in the turn of the 80s 90s it, it only really came into play commercially probably 10 years after that um, so we've been around as a uh, as a website for a while. It's been bought by, by various people. Currently, in our current form, we've got trainingjournal.com, um, which is uh, part of Dodd's parliamentary communication. Slightly odd setup, but um, we, we were owned by Fenman before, and now we're owned by Dodd's, based in the Shard. And um, yeah, looking forward to a, a bright future of LND, I hope. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it, I think the, the, the present of TJ where we are uh, now, is very much the magazine and, and the website. Something that I've brought in since I started working there just over a couple of years ago is, I guess, a bit of diversification of platforms to to use such language, but uh, um, I guess to expand the podcast offering mm -hmm. on SoundCloud, to do more with YouTube, to um, grow our social channels a little bit. And I think that's where the future of TJ is going to be, really, is... <clears throat> Not so reliant on these these two uh, media, the print and trainingjournal.com, and just kind of being 
be the places that your audiences are essentially which yeah. is what which is a good rule of thumb for any industry really and anyone is to is to work out where the people that you want to talk to and help uh, are hanging out and and be there and and support them in what they do yeah i think now more than ever like you say it's about being relevant uh, and you can think what you think is a good idea and a good tool that might have been 10 years ago but if you don't keep in contact like with your audience and, and what what they're up to and and l and d obviously is changing so rapidly um, with some of the, you know, AI and, and VR, etc., and and, and um, cloud-based uh, uh, L and D personalized learning. So yeah, it's it's really it kind of changes, but it doesn't. It kind of stays the same. But it's about staying, like you say, with mm. uh, how do you provide value. So um, thank you for introducing that bit. Um, you said kind of looking at what we bring to the table and how will this change. Do you want to say anything about that? Yeah, I think um, I think you want to. So, if you look at the the, the topics which uh, TJ has covered over the years, um, there's a very clear split between topics that have always been really popular, and I think they're the kind of things which you'll never you'll never find the answer to these things, such as what makes a great leader or uh, what makes a great coach or or um, th you know, large topics like that, organisational development topics, and and these are things which are changing all the time. And you get um, you you learn about best practice in these in these different uh, topics, but you'll never kind of get the, the the best you can possibly be. And so TJ wants to address the plan is to always address these topics and and be at the cutting edge of of what people are talking about through generally. Uh, I guess listening to conversations on social media, going to events, seeing actual conversations between people and and, and how those are playing out, and uh, what key, the kind of the high level keynotes are talking about as well. And the plan is just to be relevant, stay relevant, and lead the conversation on these topics. I think the other thing is uh, to mm -hmm. understand what are the topics of the moment. So rather than the big elements which have always been uh, an issue and are always going to change and always going to be something that you need to solve like what makes good leadership things like ai things like neuroscience things like well-being and well-being I, i'm not trying to say is something which will fall fall out of fashion or say mental health or something like that but um these are things which have come very high on the agenda quite recently and and uh, that's a really really good thing but yeah. to make sure that you're kind of listening to the long-term topics as well as the the kind of the peaks of, of, of what people are talking about in this very moment or the last month or the last two months. Yeah, yeah, really good. Okay, um, so you've also said in something we can talk about is the features of Training Journal that uh, people might not know about. So which ones are those, John? Um, well, I think this is, this is an ongoing battle is a bit of an uh, overstatement, but um, this is something that we think about, I, I think about all the time, which is kind of how our audiences overlap. So you've got a very loyal print magazine audience. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got a very loyal audience for trainingjournal.com and the content we publish there. And then we have a very loyal audience on our Twitter account, which is close to 20,000 followers. Um, mm -hmm. And I think is making all, is to try and analyze how all these audiences overlap and introduce them to the things they don't know about. So some things that people might not know about are our LinkedIn group, which is quite new. Um, and we're growing that, we grew that from scratch. Uh, it's because we, we used to have a firm which was very popular and then sort of um, people, we realized kind of that the conversation was moving onto social media. And as I was saying before, you know, go where your audience is going, go where your people, your practitioners are talking about their L&D practice. And it happens to be on social media rather than say the TJ forum. So it makes sense to nurture a LinkedIn group where a lot of the people that we want to hear from uh, about their L&D experiences are, being, are, are going to be. So the LinkedIn group is something that people might not know about because it's quite new. Yeah. Uh, other things, the SoundCloud page. So our podcasts are very popular, but um, they get accessed in, in different ways on different platforms. Some people come to them straight through social rather than going to SoundCloud. So it's always worth checking that out. And the other thing is our YouTube channel, which is another one which we are developing from scratch as well. So uh, we're currently building a library of all our old interviews, our um, 
all the shows we've been to, all the events uh, that we've uh, done roundups for and, and publishing uh, interviews as well. So they're just a couple of things that, that people might not know about what we do. Yeah. No, that's great. I mean, podcast is really the way to go, isn't it? Seeing one. Well, <laughs> we're on a podcast now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's the trend. But no, I mean, if you can get <clears throat> if you can get good content and good people and good speakers, case in question, um, you know, and get a repository for it, mm. um, people will go there. You know, they're they're driving in the car, they're at the gym, they want to listen to something. So I think it's great. So yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, this is, I mean, we've just relaunched our webinars this week uh, to give a kind of, just to touch on this quickly, I know we didn't plan on it, but um, they were good webinars, but we we figured that, you know, you can't slide that forever. There's a few more things that we want to say. And so we've kind of split them into TJ Talks now, TJ Talks Practice, TJ Talks Insight, similar to this format, but obviously not copying you. But um, so two half hour webinars per month with lots of really great guests. And, um, yeah. and, and this is something else that people may not know about. But I think interestingly, together with podcasts as well, I think we're looking at it more like you're building a library as well as the live element. So some people really like watching this live or, um, you know, watching a webinar live. It's all about the library of, of content as well. And these things are going to be useful forever, hopefully, to people. You know, yeah. It's, it's not not, not, okay. yeah. <laughs> Once recorded, always recorded. It's in the ether. But no, yeah. you know, yeah, exactly. Like you say, it's always there. So um, yeah. brilliant. Uh, I, I say I'm, I'm totally uh, with you there with, with, with regards to that idea. Um, so those were the main features that we wanted to look at with, with TJ's. Um, do you, is there anything else you wanted to cover before we move on to, to our subject that we, we just wanted to have a look at? I think I'm done. You're but, done um, with TJ's. I'll come back yeah. to you, but now I think, I think we're good. Yeah. And also, again, with this, once we put this podcast out, people can come back into the podcast and um, put the question, um, and either if you can't put a question into the podcast, you can send it to myself um, if you find me on LinkedIn, Rachel Orchard, um, or, or passiontoolset.com, or you can go and find John, and what would be a place that, where they can ask you a question on the podcast, John? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Training Journal, at Training Journal. Um, yeah, ask away, or, yeah. or LinkedIn as well in our LinkedIn group. Um, yeah. yeah, please do. Yeah, so any questions on Training Journal, please do shoot those over to, to John and um, he will answer those for you because it's a great um, resource. And obviously, like John says, you know, it's been there since the 1960s. So anything they don't know about training and learning, nobody knows. Um, so we, the, 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 we talked around so much before the podcast about what, what we wanted to focus on today because learning and development, you could, you know, you, you could talk for days. Um, but where you and I kind of, settled which i think is quite um you know pertinent to both of us at the moment is this whole idea of lifelong learning um and you you said that you you'd like to to look at sort of why learning doesn't stop after higher education so did you want to say a bit more about that john sure um i just think that uh for a lot of people not everyone um otherwise we'd all be out of the job but for a lot of people the the industry is kind of very much split into these uh, sections, and I don't know, I don't think it should be. You know, you, you go to nursery, you go to primary school, you go to secondary school, um, you might go to higher education, you might go straight into work. Um, but the learning journey is forever, and you're always learning, whether it's in a structured environment or not, mm -hmm. you know, and it's always happening to you, and you never know where you'll learn something which will affect you, you know, in the most important way of your entire life. And you don't know where you'll be, and you don't know, and it might not be in school, it might not be in work, it might just be walking down the street, it might be listening to a podcast. I often, you know, I tend to tidy the house while listening to podcasts and find out amazing things. But yeah. the point being really that, that it's very structured when we're young and less structured when we're older. Mm -hmm. And I think you need to look at learning as, as a, a real lifelong journey. And, uh, a friend of um, the TJ podcast, Herdreesen, who works for a company called A New Spring, talks about the uh, 
100 year learning life, which is the way he splits. He's talking about the population aging as we get healthier and uh, the way that you split your life into these segments that, that, that aren't just kind of school, work, retirement kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that's a really good way of looking at it because I think it should be something which people, uh, you know, focus on and find very important after the age of 21 or 18 or whenever you decide to uh, move into the workplace. Um, my mum was a uh, university lecturer. Yeah. So she was very keen on learning and she's learning all the time. She's she's in her mid 70s and she's le she's learning two languages at the moment. She taught languages when she was at university. And um, I know I think it's a good testament to the idea that you, you're never too old to learn. The growth mindset is real. You know, and, yeah. um, Look, I would argue with you that that was not really there until even 10, 15 years ago, maybe, because e even um, with neuroscience, mm. they've broken through the whole assumption that um, there was this idea that the brain, the brain plasticity and its ability to take on new information and new skills stops at like. 18 or 20 or whatever it was and then obviously new research in the last 20 or so years has proven that the brain will continue um with its plasticity as long as you continue to use the muscle um yeah it's probably a bit harder when you get older i i heard a coach say yesterday yeah well obviously it gets a bit older to learn a language and he was sort of approaching 60 but it's like well you know can we question that assumption as well so with these new findings Previously, you went to school and then apparently your brain just stopped learning because the brain is not supposed to learn after 18. So so I, I would really argue with you that this is really only a current trend. And because of the Internet, it allows us all to go and educate ourselves and do self-directed learning. Wouldn't you say that most people coming out of school 50 years ago would not go, oh, I'm 25. I can't wait to learn something new. I mean, like you say, it's not everybody who's a, a growth mindset learner, but it wasn't really established that uh, in your 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever, that you would still want to learn because you don't learn at that age, you learn at school age. Um, I would agree that it's easier now and, and we've, and certainly the internet has made um, it easier, but that doesn't mean that no one did it before. I mean, mm. the research has come out now, but it doesn't mean that the brain has, wasn't like that before. It's just that our, our research about the brain is now more accurate you know, yeah. discovery rather than invention. So, yeah, I, I do agree that, um, that, that I, I guess the overall uh, mindset of the population was that you come out of school and you don't learn anything and uh, you just go into work. But but that's clearly not what people do. And yeah. it's easier now, but I don't think, you know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, it's changed dramatically. And I don't think, people uh, have just started learning for the whole of their lives. I just think they've been told it's easier now, and it is easier now. Yeah, yeah, I guess there's more written on it. I mean, obviously, previously, learning was skills-based learning, mm. whereas now it's obviously, you know, behavioural, performance-based, you know, cognitive-based, um, you know, mental health awareness, resilience, you know, all of these types of, you know, leadership skills, um, etc you know previously it was more okay I need to go do a new job and I need to go on a course um mm. I, I don't know I mean when I was went into the world of work that's that's what there was if you want to learn something it's it's a new skill or you're ch you're changing to a different job as opposed to I don't know I mean communications leadership training I guess maybe that's been around for a long time yeah um, I was thinking about this the other day. I was preparing what I was going to say, and, and there's something that I've been thinking about, and I don't know if you'll agree, so I'll ask you. Um, do you think learning should be fun? Do you think, At any age, do you think learning should be fun, or is that kind of irrelevant to the process? It does make it easier, but I don't think it's even fun, John. I think because I was, I was um, – something cropped up the other day for a um, – a podcast I was recording and the main element I was touching on this ability that aligning your goals or your training goals or your learning goals whatever with your main values and then if you can align with sort of who you are and why you're doing it you're more likely to stay motivated 
And obviously, if you're doing the back, your values, you, you, you're having fun anyway. Um, so I wouldn't say necessarily, because another thing I said in the podcast was happiness is overrated. This whole idea that you've got to be happy and having fun all the time. Actually, you can be fulfilled and find joy in a moment, even when you're working really, really hard and you find it quite strenuous and finding it quite stressful. Because then a certain amount of stress is also um, very useful to us because it helps keep you awake and alive, etc. Mm. So I, I would... I would sort of agree with you, but I would say not necessarily, yeah, fun, but make it values aligned and, and team values aligned um, and sort of understand why you're doing it and that it lines up so that you're more likely to, to do it because you're not going to just change because like, why, why am I having to do this for the sake of what? So I don't know. Does that ha answer your question? I think so. Yeah. Um, I just sometimes you think I it should just be fun. I don't think it should. I don't think. I agree it should be values aligned and it should have purpose um but i do also think that the most fun learning that you've ever done or the most where you've been really excited to to, to discover something new and this incredible information is probably in your youth and it's probably at school probably maybe not mm -hmm. but um we can, i'm going to draw that parallel for the sake of this argument but, um <laughs> It was actually in my adulthood, but yeah, okay. <laughs> but for, for, okay, for me, for, for maybe other people. Yeah. And I'm, just, I'm just thinking, I go to events and you hear people talking about performance and business performance, and I understand the importance of business performance, but it does make learning seem very utilitarian, and I don't know if that's a good thing. And I know that the learning, you know, your learning strategy should be aligned to your business strategy, and I get that, but... I don't know if it's just about performance. I don't know if it's just about the bottom line. I think there's yeah. supposed to be another element there. Yeah, I guess you're kind of starting to touch on transformational elements of learning, maybe, mm. where you're actually transforming a person and mm. you're transforming the possibilities of their environment and the way they work as a team and the way they work as a company. But that kind of just goes back to my general thing of being values aligned. And do, does the, the top leadership know what the values of the company and communicate that daily so that people know and that people are aligned with that when they, they come into the company? They're well aware of what the company's about. And it, so you're then more likely to want to do new things, make change, do learning, etc. So, yeah, I, I, I agree with you that when it becomes about measures and stuff, it does become a bit... Uh, you're consuming and you're just you're, you're a product and you're a unit mm. um so yeah I, I, I do agree with you but i think adding fun is that going to take it away from that no you're not really gonna solve everything just by just yeah. making <laughs> but you know I, but yeah obviously when you can get someone to come out of their comfort zone um, and, you know, because they, they they might be so much in their head of why am I here at this training and, and they've got so much work to do. And I agree, sometimes when you make it a bit fun or a bit different or you you kind of shock people, you take them out. You've got to be able to interrupt old thinking. So maybe that's yeah. what fun does is interrupt old thinking. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think there's a bigger um, yeah, transformational thing that maybe would you say there's a bit of transformational thing that, that's that's missing then when you see it as ut utilitarian i think so yeah i think so but also i mean to, in my ad's note last week in the training journal newsletter something else that you should subscribe to um yeah. is I, I was talking about um to do it quickly so in our content management system you tick a piece of content to a, a various different tags depending on what it's about right so i find myself pretty much most pieces of content ticking to culture because most of it's about culture behavior change learning od leadership it's all about culture yeah. i think so so that's a very important aspect of of lifelong learning is is being in a company that understands the importance of it and yeah. it, it permeates everything that you do and and everything that you are yeah Agrees, because it's kind of like the environment we're swimming in, isn't it? And it's mm. the it's the invisible rules that are mm. going on. So um, yeah, I, t I totally agree. Um, have we covered most of your questions? Uh, why learning doesn't stop after higher education? And I, I like the fact that you said that learning was always there. 
Um, we learn all the time. Um, how can we make the most of this? Yeah, so it might be good for us to answer that. Um, of how can we make the most? The last two questions is how can we make the most of learning all the time, and um, how can L and D departments support the the culture shift, as you as you said? So yeah, and um, how can we make the most of it? Um, I'll put the two questions together really, and um, yeah. I think uh, hmm. I think you need learning champions, mm -hmm. but I think uh, they don't. <laughs> I think it doesn't need to be kind of a directive, but it needs, but, but you need to kind of surreptitiously find people that have a curious nature to them and have kind of exploratory kind of outlook on their, their journey through the company. And they, they're your learning champions. They're the people that get it. And, and you want to be able to empower them to talk to other people from different teams, from different strata of the business you know, to collaborate and to point people in the right direction. And that kind of puts me on to our next point, which is about nudging, nudge theory and all that sort of thing. So, you know, show, yeah. don't tell. Don't tell people to do it, but suggest it and subtly remind people and show them the benefits of uh, of being in a learning culture and learning all the time, I think. And the last one, this is impossible, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, yeah. There's definitely examples of this. And someone did give me an example, but I forgot to now. But... Um, Make your CLO the CEO. No. It's usually, you know, it's usually uh, someone from the business development part of things or or operational, you know. But um, I think it would be a real show of the importance of, uh, of L&D if the CLO became the CEO. But that may be a little far-fetched for a lot of places. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, yeah, and the nudges part. And um, with the, you said make, uh, did you call it ambassador? Or I can't remember what you called the people who were. Champions. Who, huh? Champions. 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 Mm -hmm. um, that made me think of an idea, John, maybe for TJ, um, is, like you say, some companies have those official positions and some companies mm -hmm. don't have them as they're a non-official position. Um, how, uh, how about training journal working with the learning and development industry on champion championing the champions? So literally, you were you you put out an article and you can run it as maybe like a regular article of who are your um, L and D champions, ambassadors, whatever uh, the curious people, and are they an official position or a non-official position, and how does it work for your company? Because I would be interested to to know the results of that, John. I don't yeah. know whether you've ever run something like that before. No, no, we haven't. That would be interesting. Yeah. Well, you said it. You said the word champion. So I, I was just like, wow, you've said it now, John. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I would like to know more information on that. Me personally, because I'm quite a curious uh, coach and um, author and podcaster. And, and I would, uh, yeah, I would like to know how many companies do, do have that kind of position or would be willing to put their CLO as, uh, as a CEO, even just maybe for a month. <laughs> I think it also speaks a bit to the changing role of the learning department and more people are seeing it, you know, the, the move from courses, the move to facilitation, the move to empowerment, the idea that <clears throat> you're not here to tell people, to just point people to an interesting web page or whatever, but you're here to say, what is going to help you in your job? Who's going to help you? It might not be me. It might not even be training. You know, there's, this is something I've heard repeatedly recently, actually. Um, saying you know what what the L&D department might need to do is is actually not train people but to to it might be a structural thing it might be something else it might be cultural it might not be mm. what you think it is to solve this problem to make people better yeah so yeah. okay all right well um i look forward to your new regular article slot of championing championing the champions um which I cannot say for the life of me. Uh, we, we are coming up to uh, to 30 minutes now. Is there anything you'd like to leave us with, John? Any any um, morsel of value that you've got from your your many years in the in the learning and development industry? Um, not really. Just subscribe to uh, <laughs> join the site, and uh, if 
get get in touch with me and I'll give you a three month subscription to the uh, digital magazine for one. But I'd also like to say that um, Twitter and social media in general in 2019 can be a very divisive place. Um, and it can be quite negative depending on who you follow yeah. uh, and all that sort of thing. But um, L&D people are very positive and always very nice to uh, be in conversation with and to, and to, you know, really trying to make a positive difference and, and point people at, at good things and, and talk about uh, the positive elements of their industry. And that's what I find anyway. So yeah. well yeah. done, everybody. Oh, brilliant. Well, good note to end on, John. And um, I, yeah, I, I, as I say, I also look forward to you bringing more fun to L&D as well, like you suggested. <laughs> so um, thank you very much for your time here today, John. And uh, we'll post this out onto social media. And I'll give you the link so you can share with your social media as well. And um, it's been a very interesting chat for me as well. And um, I look forward to speaking to you soon, John. And, and again, we've, we've given the details for where people can reach you, which if you'd just like to repeat one more time, John, where people can reach you. Uh, best place, uh, get me on Twitter, uh, at Training Journal, or you can email me, jonathan.kennard at trainingjournal.com. Wonderful. Thanks, John, and speak to you soon. Thanks, Rachel. Take care. Bye-bye.